database migrations, also known as schema evolution, is for sure one of the scariest topics when it comes to database workflows. At the same time, it's also one of the things that Prisma 1 got quite famous for because it was very easy to migrate the data with Prisma 1. However, we learned that Prisma 1 has a few limitations, or the, the migration system has limitations, especially if you want to hook into the migration system and you want to, for example, say, I want to do something before or after migration. When it comes to team workflows, it's not very scalable when the whole team just edits one file without having any way to communicate their changes. Now, when you want to design a new migration system, it makes sense to do that from first principles. However, it also makes sense to not learn from your own history, but also from what other people are doing. When you explore the state of the art of database migrations, you will discover a curious thing. Most of these systems still require you to tell them exactly what they have to do. In other words, you cannot just provide, tell them what you want. You have to define how to get from state A to B. It's pretty much the same as if you still would have to use the DOM API instead of React. This is error prone and it's a lot of overhead and I don't want to deal with that on a daily basis as a developer. So instead, it makes way more sense to have a declarative API. You can see here on the left side, for example, if we want to change the type of the price field from int to string, on the left side we have a Rails migration. You have to type that by hand. You get some stuff generated, but you still have to think about this. And with Prisma 2, you just have to write down your change, save it, and you're done. And there are quite some, some systems out there which have declarative migrations. However, they oftentimes mix a lot of code in some DSL in PHP, for example, together with a declaration. And as soon as you have a big schema, this is not scalable anymore. So as previously, previously has already been said, we have been designing a dedicated language for that in the last months called the Prisma Definition Language. And you already see the small examples uh, in the uh, bottom right corner. It's very similar from the syntax to the GraphQL SDL, but it's way more powerful. Now, the systems that are existing today, there are quite some really powerful systems. These are oftentimes, however, not very approachable. On the other hand, there are systems that are easy to use, but it's very, uh, um, it's very hard to um, do more powerful things with them. And that is exactly the challenge here, having a system that gives you both benefits. And in order to make that happen, we made a decision with a, to, to have a big change with uh, our new migration system, which is saving migrations into the file system. With Lyft, you will from now on have such a migration folder. And I will later go into the details what we are actually uh, generating there. Everything you see will be auto-generated. You don't have to care about it, but as soon as you want to hook into the system and say, I want to execute something after or before, you can do that. Now, migrating the database is not enough if we talk about migrations. You oftentimes have code that is actually connecting to the database. So actually migrating your code is really, really important. So you cannot just view the migration system isolated without your data access. And when you look into the state of the art for this problem, then you will see numerous blog posts talking about uh, how to get around this with some deprecation of fields and whatever. But in the end, we believe you should have proper tooling. And the proper tooling is both type safety for your data access. Having a type safe language is not enough. You need type safe data access and also having a great one-time validation with your tool. And an example is just Using TypeScript alone, for example, is not enough. You all, if you just pass in SQL strings, you will not get informed by anyone when there is a breaking change in your data. You uh, need TypeSafe access, for example, Photon. But talk is cheap, so let's actually look into a demo. I think I have to change a bit, make this big bigger. Yeah, perfect. So we have an example here where we just um, have a simple data model. I see I didn't reset my demo, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> um, we have a field called view count two here in our block. So, and we can, as you see on the left here, the file system is fairly empty. 
And we can start now. As I said, we want to easily get started, but also have a powerful system. So let's get easily started with Prisma Dev. What Prisma Dev does, it will now just migrate the database. You don't have to care about migrations at, the po at this point, and it will also generate the client for you. And we can now run this client. So here's our main TypeScript file, and we can just see, can we create a block? Yes, that works. Okay. So now let's say we want to rename the view count to, to view count. How can the tooling now help us with this uh, change? So what we just saw is that this watch command has been reloading and has been migrating the database and regenerating the new Photon client based on the new data model that we just saved. And we now get informed by TypeScript here. It's type, TypeScript uh, lets us know um, view count 2 is not a thing anymore. Did you mean to write view count? Okay, we can rename that. And on the bottom right corner, you see the Photon runtime actually validating the query and it says, I don't know any view count too. Please call it view count and let us know what other options we have. So if we save this again, then both TypeScript and the Photon runtime are happy. So we see this is awesome. We have type, uh, how to get back to the, yes. We have type safe access, but this is a fairly simple example and in the real world, you just have more complex examples. One, Classic is introducing a required field. In this case, we have a first and a last name, and we want to have a full name that is just being concatenated by these. And so how do we do that with Lyft? We will do this now in a two-step approach. We will first introduce the field optionally, update our data and the application, deploy everything. Application already starts using the new field, and then in the second step, we will make it required. So let's go through this. First step is actually making it optional, introducing full name optional. And now we want to migrate also our data. We already have existing users and we don't want their full name field to be empty. And now the new migration hook systems comes into play. So we see we have a folder per migration, migration slash a timestamp and a name that you have been choosing. And we now have a convention-based system where if you call a file, for example, after.ts, we will pick it up after the migration of that particular uh, data model has been performed. And what you see here, we are generating for you a Photon client specifically for that migration so that after the migration has been applied, the state of the database, then you, you get a, a, a TypeSafe client for that, so you can also do your uh, data migrations in a TypeSafe manner. But again, talk is cheap, so let's look into an example. I prepared exactly this example already. So we have now our two, mi we, we just created our migration for the optional field. We have our after TS here. And what we would like to be able to do now, we would like to run this migration locally, this script that we just have seen, and see if it's actually working. We can do that by Prisma Lift Up. So let's try it out. And we will see, okay, awesome, our script is running. We uh, see the logs here. And the next step normally would now be to push this to production, git push, wait for CICD to pick the change up. The, uh, the new application, the, the updated application, now already starts writing the full name when the user has been created. The old data has been migrated. We're in a good state. So what we can do now, very simple, we just remove the question mark here and create a new migration. We do that with Prisma to lift safe. It will ask us for a migration name. You can imagine a migration name similar as a git commit message. It's basically to communicate what did I do here. We just call this required, uh, required uh, full name. We just made a full name required. We see the diff, what has been changing here. And we can locally also try this migration out by doing Prisma to lift up. Okay, works locally, perfect. Okay, so now we have done this, let's say it's a Friday, and on the Monday the team comes back from the weekend and they now wanna know what actually happened. Optimally, they just have to look into the code and, and it auto-documents itself. So let's see just by the 
based on the artifacts that have been created here, is it, uh, how, how can we now know what actually happened? So if we look into this now, we have our migrations folder, as I just said, and every migration has its own folder. We can look into this one, for example, where we created the optional full name, and we will see that all of this stuff, by the way, is auto-generated. We will see that we, we, we see the uh, SQL steps that uh, were executed. We see a diff of the data model. If I'm also a colleague now who comes back from the weekend, I can look into the after TS and I will see, aha, that's how we were seeding the data there. So now this is a tool for teams to communicate actually what they are migrating. For every migration, you also see the, you have a snapshot of the data model of that po uh, point in time so that you actually can later understand when, when something goes wrong, huh? where have we been in that moment? So you get all the information here auto-generated. Let's recap. We have a new language, the Prisma definition language, which we, which we designed in the last months. It's specifically just there for one reason, and that is data modeling. That's it, nothing else. With Prisma Dev, we could easily get started. The database has been created, in this ca uh, uh, case, a SQLite database. We could save the uh, migration with Prisma Lift Save. If we say we're basically ready to push this to production, we saw that with the new hook system, we are now able to say we can do more multi-step migrations. The migrations are self-documenting, and we are now also allowing team workflows, for example, for the ones of you have, who are working or, or have worked in a big corporation where you have a separate DBA responsible for uh, changing the data structure of the database, you can now just take this uh, SQL and hand it over. So how does the future now look like? The hook system that you just saw is not yet available. Everything else is already available in the preview. Another thing that we are working on is automated conflict resolution. So if now two people work on separate branches for a while and have, avail have been uh, iterating on the schema, merging that together can get you in a hell of a situation. And again, tooling can help you a lot in that moment. And last but not least, online migrations. If you not only have a couple of megabytes, but gigabytes or terabytes of data, it's not just enough to rename a column that will probably just break your production system because it's a very database heavy operation. Co companies like GitHub have been working on systems like Ghost where they, for example, have a replica of MySQL running. There they simulate the migration and then if everything went well, they're basically streaming that back. So these kind of systems who are built by big companies, we want to make more approachable for beginners and small teams. Thanks.